usually like if I'm working towards something in business, I'll have numbers that I want to hit by a certain date usually. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get there by that date, but the more that you are reading these out loud to yourself in the morning, after you calm yourself down, the more you're aware that this is what you want to be working within and becoming. And therefore you're going to subconsciously take actions throughout your day to make these things come to life. That's the biggest difference between affirmations working and not. It's that you are putting action behind them to bring them to life. You might've heard the saying, creativity is the new productivity. Welcome to another episode of Social PR Secrets. My name is Lisa Beyer and I'll be your host. Today's guest, I welcome Heath Armstrong. He went from suffering from addiction and alcoholism to being the inspiration and brainchild behind making affirmation cards, hosting a podcast and producing happiness journals. In this episode, we talk about everything from tapping into positivity to biohacks for creativity, morning routines, and overall optimizing your health. Please welcome Keith. And also, I love this mantra that I learned from his website. As you honor your creativity, the universe honors you. Welcome, Keith. Hey, everybody. Um, I want to welcome Heath Armstrong. Hi, Heath. How are you? Spectacular. Yeah. I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah. Well, you um, have a really cool business of like products and your, your media. So I wanted to talk to you about exactly how you got started and tell me about your podcast and how everything fits together. (laughs) Yeah. I try to lean heavily into this idea of the manifestation of inspiration internally, externally, that kind of looks like the word motivation for creatives but I used to work in the concrete construction industry making, I mean, for 10 years, I was in this industry making, I worked in a factory for $13 an hour, making concrete receptacles that carried human feces underground. And I didn't, you know, somebody's got to do it. Right. (laughs) Right. And there's nothing wrong with that, except like my mind and how creative and I, I guess the way that I'm drawn to play with the universe was always like it, it manifested itself in a lot of pain and misery and depression me being in that world. And uh, yeah, I was like, I, I just turned to substance abuse, alcoholism for a lot of years and had a couple of really bad rock bottom moments. One per se, one of many, but like one that I really remembered that that was kind of a, an anchor point for transition was when I woke up in my garage with my face up on a stairwell leading into my door that was inside of the garage that went in the house and my dog staring at me and the way that they were staring at me and my nose had been bleeding all over the the step. And I had a bottle of like liquor there and my car was parked in the middle of the front yard. This is like a residential neighborhood, (laughs) like, like the suburbs in Kentucky. Some like outside of Lexington, my car was parked in the front yard running like gas, everything. You can smell the gas fumes everywhere. Had been there. I mean, I don't know what time I had gotten there and passed out, but like the whole situation was absolutely ridiculous. I couldn't quite understand how I was sort of watching myself like it was a movie just become you know, more and more susceptible susceptible to to like you, you call whatever you want like resistance gremlins procrastination gremlins depression demons you know all the stuff and something was birthed in that moment something like was planted and a seed started to grow that would allow me to sort of rise like a phoenix and and move into this this amazing path that I get to experience now, but I'd never left the country. I had never really done anything that was creative per se out of, you know, traditional stuff. And I didn't grow up with a lot of money. My mom was kind of a single mom. There's a lot of stuff going on there, but I had all these abundance blocks. I had all these like imposter syndromes and it just slowly started to develop into an exploration of like, what do I want in life and how do I get there? And the reason I originally started podcasting with a show that I used to have called the artsy now show is because there was one woman who helped me when I was really down and depressed. And I sent her a message being very scared to do so had never asked for help before, but she responded because I had heard her talk on a podcast. It was when the, the Apple forced the podcast apps on your phone for the first time. It was like 2014, I think might've been a little bit earlier. Yeah. I think it was about 2014. 
she calls me and just like called me on all my bullshit and was like, look, you can be creative. You're obviously good at your job or you're working in this industry. You're finding success there. You can make this happen in other areas of the world. Like you have so much time in life to like recreate. We live so many lives within our lives, you know? And she introduced me to a couple of people. One was Hal Elrod, who is the, you know, the author of the Miracle Morning series, which is like an international banger. And in the morning routine in that book completely changed my life and helped me regain who I was and what I wanted to work towards. And then she introduced me to another guy who taught me how to podcast. And, and with that podcasting, I was like, I'm going to start finding creative entrepreneurs who are doing the things that I want to be doing and asking them how they do it. And that sort of steamrolled into me learning a whole lot of things over hundreds of interviews and traveling, started traveling around the world. And my experiences around the world have been un- unbelievable. And then putting all the things that I learned that were ca- kind of like crossing paths between all these amazing, magical people into a system that I could apply to my life. And when I did that, it was crazy. Like business opportunities started opening up. I started bringing in money on my own for the first time. I quit my job. I sold everything I owned. I moved across the country, started traveling around the world. And I created a, the original e-commerce business that just like for somebody who was so used to living off such a small amount of money that I was making, this thing went to six figure months, like within a year of me making it. And that was crazy transition for me. And I will say that that was not like, it's not like I just made it and now everything's done. Like I actually ended up having trouble losing that business later, going through a lot more depression, having to rebuild my entire like pursuit in life. And now I'm in a really good place, but that's how it all got started. And Rage Create was born because I wanted to create little reminders of how magical we all are, little reminders that we can get in each moment to remind us of our magic and to refocus because in this world, I feel like there's just so many distractions that are just engineered to knock you off of the good things about yourself or the stuff that you're working towards to be part of your vision in just a couple of seconds, like texts and emails and all the stuff you talk about in digital detox to try to get away from these like digital gremlins that come in and try to absorb you. I wanted to, I wanted to make things that helped remind people in those moments that they're amazing and powerful as opposed to cripple them. And so that's sort of where I am now. What are some examples of some of these little sound bites and the content that you're creating that's helping people? Yeah, the original. So I, I started out by making journals that were, it's just a five minute sort of morning routine and night. And that was super imposter syndrome, but I was doing all these different journaling systems for morning routine and night routine to sort of track progress and not to make it like overwhelming. Cause I think a lot of journaling can if there's a lot of lines and fill in the blanks, it can feel overwhelming. So mine was more of like a mosaic. You can color, you can draw type of approach. My black lab came down and peed on these like five or six different journals I was using to track things. And I took it as a sign from the universe that I needed to put them into a system. I could use all in one journal. So I made this journal called the, the sweet ass journal to develop your happiness muscle in 100 days. And I put that out in like 2017 and it got entered into like, I don't know. It was like all these weird things started happening where I didn't know how to market anything then. I didn't know how to like sell things and and people were just picking it up and using it and contacting me. And then thousands of people were using it. And it was like, it was wild. And that rolled into all these other ideas. Like, can I put little inspirational messages on toilet paper and call it sweet ass toilet paper? Can I do it on like wipes? Like what are all these things that we use in ordinary life all the time that like fortune cookie is basically the best example of this. Like mm-hmm. everyone loves to get a little like, or tea companies do a good job too. Those little messages when you open a tea bag that are like just positive. There's not that many of those in this world, but there's infinite numbers of products. So like, why is that? The the first big exploration that I wanted to start with that came through was like, I was just dropped into these deep meditations and playing my sound bowls. And this note was like, you have to make affirmation decks and I channel like kind of this, the mascot for Rage Create is called Skid the Unisquid. He's like this Unisquid that lives in space. He comes into my visions and tells me what to do. But he's like, you got to make affirmation cards. And I hadn't really used those at the point, but I was using affirmations based on the Miracle Morning series. And they're super powerful. For those um, that don't know, explain what an affirmation card is. An affirmation card is basically... It's sort of a motivational card. I have some here. I can read one if you want. <clears throat> it's sort of a motivational card that helps you affirm a vision that you're working towards, except affirmation cards may not spe- be specific to your goals. Like if you make your own affirmations, like I, like one I used in particular for a long time when I was not location independent, I didn't work for myself was I am location independent and I work for myself. 
very important to put it in the present tense, very important to repeat it out loud multiple times a day with emotion and enthusiasm and to really drop into a zone of like dictating what your environment is, who's around you when you're, when you're living this, what does it feel like? What are you tasting? What are you eating? I mean, I could give an example of a, a full paragraph of an affirmation that I use in my vision today, if you want, if you think it would help people. Um, but an affirmation card is essentially, there's, there's several different people, you know, that make them, and they're just kind of like light sayings. Like I, I eternally love myself or a lot of them are real fluffy and woo. And therefore people don't really lean into them and truly believe them because an affirmation will not work unless you truly believe it. And mm -hmm. to truly believe it, you have to be able to add openness and willingness to it. So for example, if I say, I love myself, but it's not true, I don't truly believe it, then me repeating that over and over again, isn't necessarily going to make me love myself. But if I say I am open to loving myself, then it's a possibility that I could love myself. Right. And then I start to kind of, kind of believe it. And then you have to sort of add action. And it's like, am I willing to love myself? So I am willing to love myself now. And when I'm saying that out loud, I'm like, I am willing because I'm open. And then it actually will end up evolving into, I love myself. But when I'm channeling affirmations from like, you know, skid the Uniscuit or whatever, it's kind of an Oracle style approach for anyone who's like used Oracle decks or affirmation decks. The way that I do our cards or we put an affirmation on the front and then I put sort of a message from the universe on the back in relation to that affirmation. So the one that I just pulled out of the deck, this is the new deck that I'm making, by the way, it comes out soon, but this is, I am rooted to the tree of universal superpowers. And the message on the back of this is every creature on this planet is power packed with its own magic. The chameleon can see 360 degrees around its own body. The turritopsis jellyfish, I don't know if I say that right, but turritopsis jellyfish reverts to juvenile form after mating, creating an immortal cycle, which is insane to think about. The dung beetle can pull 1,000 times its body weight. The shaggy ink cat mushroom can push their way through asphalt. You are the master creator capable of doing and being anything that you wish using the magic gifted to you by the universe. So it's time to carpe that fucking diem. You in the universe sitting in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. And nice. these are just like, you know, we have 60 cards in each deck and they're all on different subjects, but they're, they're really affirmation cards or affirmations that you use per se are just little reminders of, of what your higher self is, who you want to become, who you're working towards being, and how you can do it in every day. And they're fun. They're, they're something that's really helped me in my transition. I really like the example with the superpowers and how, you know, you went into like the, you know, kind of like it was the very simple statement. That's the affirmation and then the detail. But I think just looking at how people don't realize that they really do, each of us do have superpowers that we can either choose to like make space to tap into and let them let the superpowers come out where they're just like layers and layers of being stuck and your superpowers are stuck inside you. What are, what's some advice on actually like creating that space so that your superpowers can actually come out and work <laughs> for you? Yeah. I kind of call this unlearning. It, it's, we, we, we were kind of born into this world, blasted through our mother's magical portal and we're pure, innocent child beings that are sort of just so interested in creativity and play. And as we get older, all of these things in the world start slapping layers of muck upon us that kind of teach us this prototype that we're supposed to be, all these things that we're supposed to be doing. And in my experience, it's been like, how many, how many avenues can I explore that help me rip those layers off and become this like pure child self? And I think the biggest catalyst for me in the beginning was learning how to react appropriately in moments when things would happen, because life isn't really about what happens to you. It's not about the beauty that happens to you. It's not about the bullshit that happens to you. Life is really about how you choose to react when it happens. And we can either take all of these things that happen and look at them one of two ways. We can allow the resistance in the fear to come into our lives, these gremlins to come in and have a disco party in our brain and on our mindset and absorb our energy until we, you know, end up collapsing into our couch with a tub of ice cream and fried chicken, watching reruns of like Jerry Springer or something, you know, not showering for days, or 
we can use them as, as motivation and fuel to move towards what we want to make in our life that will support us to become our highest selves. What do we have to do internally? What do we have to heal internally? What do we have to get rid of and remove blockages of internally, emotionally, physically to be able to become whole so that we can then share our gifts and our creativity with the world and help other people access the healing internally so that they can share their gifts with the world. It's like this constant uh, domino effect, like one person healed can heal so many other people. And, and I think the world hurts right now. Right. And, And we need more than ever for everyone to have the support to be able to go deep internally. And it really does come in, in your ability to manage how you react in a moment. It's like, are you hesitating? Are you procrastinating? Are you resisting? And how do you overcome that? And I think a lot of the stuff you talk about with digital detox and then in any sort of realm of, of creating habits and doing what excites you and following your passion, there's infinite routes that you can go. And, and everyone that is listening, like you got to sort of navigate that yourself, but there's so many amazing places to start. And I certainly wouldn't be, or have been able to navigate to the place I am without the help of so many others sharing their ideas and what has helped them. But I've also taken a lot of the things and blended them into the perfect thing for myself. So that all started with how do I, you know, how do you react in a moment? Yeah. And I think also, you know, if you wouldn't have gone through what you went through and, you know, had, I'm just going to call it radical transformation because of it, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing. So it takes that pain to go through to get to the the happiness so that you can really, like, it seems like, you know, you're, you're able to kind of like shed that skin and now be your true self. And, you know, you're in a much better place and you're helping others be in a better place. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's never easy. I do. I do think that everyone has a we all have peaks and valleys and we're all, we're all going to have really bad things that happen and and really good things that happen. If we're open to feeling them, that's the the best route. I mean, when I was listening to the the podcast that you did, I want to say maybe her name was Karen. I'm not sure. Yeah. She's talking about that. Yeah. Karen, I mean, she got hit by a car, right? Like Mm -hmm. she got ran Mm -hmm. over by a car. And and I was thinking in that moment, like when I first started interviewing people, I I talked to this amazing woman named Kim Nichol, who she was the one who originally taught me to meditate, to calm my mind. I used to laugh at people meditating. That's how bad, like that's how different of a person I was. And now I, you know, I'm in it for an hour a day. I'm doing all these like weird ohm chanting, playing sound bowls, like connected to the inner but she, she watched a guy get hit by a bus that was her coworker one morning. And that radically shift her from, I mean, they were walking into work together. This dude got hit by a bus, killed him. That radically shift her away from working in a law firm to teaching law firms, mindfulness and meditation. How Elrod, you know, he, he had a, like, he was pronounced dead for like six minutes or something in his accident. And he's gone through multiple cancer battles since, but like he's holding on to these principles that help him continue to live and thrive and we, we all have these, like, in my situation, I can look at it and think like, it's not even a fraction of the experience that other people have around, but we all kind of collectively together looking for an answer. I have friends that grew up and have had from the outside, you know, box, a perfect life, but they're the most, you know, miserable, um, depressed people that I know. And like, they're beautiful people, but there's no doubt that it's been that journey is not easy in itself. Like you have, you, you're born with a bunch of money and you don't have any like reason to strive to like survive or whatever that can turn into some of the darkest places in the world also. So it's like, what's important to you. And, you know, I think the answer, I think I finally kind of figured this out last year. <laughs> I think the answer to what's important to me is like sitting around a fire, staring at people in the eyes, looking at, you know, with the stars above you out in the wilderness and just being like, I love you. And like this, this glass of water that I'm drinking right now, I, I am so grateful for this water going down my throat. Like, how did this water get carried to me? Like, how old is this water? Like, where did it come from? Has anybody else graced this water in, in like the food, you know, you think about when you're eating food, like slowing down and closing your eyes and just like feeling the taste and the textures, like who packaged this, who grew this? Like, where did the seed originate? How old is the lineage of this seed? And you start to really realize how magical the earth is. And then there's nothing more effective than going outside and standing with your shoes off, hugging a tree. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but our ancestors evolved over millions of years in direct connectivity of the earth. 
you know, they weren't sitting in cubicles. They weren't wearing rubber soled shoes to disconnect them from the earth. They weren't using all these sterile hospital gloves and, you know, masks all the time everywhere to, to keep each other's energy separated. They were, they were out connected to the earth. And there's a real scientific thing that happens when you're touching the earth with your body. There's a flow, a massive flow of electrons that comes into your body that act as antioxidants. And these antioxidants balance out the free radicals that are in your body that are caused by electromagnetic frequencies and our disconnection from the earth. And like free radicals are the reason that there's so much inflammation. And if, if these free radicals are being landed a charge from the antioxidants, they balance themselves out and all that kind of pain goes away. So there's a reason why stress lowers and, and blood pressure gets better and, and happiness levels raise when you're outside running around, you know, you don't, you don't even have to be wild. You don't have to climb a tree to the top and, you know, rip your clothes off in a lightning storm and jump down into a bunch of mud and roll around. Like just go outside and listen to the birds every once in a while. And that'll really help. So going outside is a digital detox secret. I'm going to say, Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Walking out, walking barefoot in the sand yeah. or through the grass will do how, how would you describe it again? Like by walking outside barefoot, whether it's the sand or, or the grass, it, reduces the level of inflammation, potentially reduces your stress level, oh, I, balances out your energy. Yeah. I mean, if you think about the, I have an affirmation that I use for this. It's called, as I submerge my body in mother earth, I heal all my hurts. And it goes back to that principle of like how we are built as humans to be part of nature. If you look, this is crazy. If you look at the, I think it's the Webster dictionary definition of nature. It literally says like, everything in the natural world in connection with the earth, except humans. It's insane. It legitimately separates humans from nature, which is not true at all. Like, why do they have that in there as the, de as the definition? I don't know. But before there were concrete jungles in these cities and, and before there were rubber shoes and, you know, carpets and paints and, and plastic bottles and cubicles and all of that, our ancestors were evolving in direct connectivity with the earth. They were bare assed. They were absorbing antioxidants like I was just talking about. They're absorbing vitamins and critical aminos and dense nutrition through the untainted soils and the natural water sources and, and the rejuvenating sunlight. All of these elements of outdoors have their own way of of beasting you up. We have fire, we have water, we have air, we have earth. And, and the more you're connected to that, the more you realize that you are part of this ultimate healing process, which is nature. Nature is the ultimate healer physically, mentally, and spiritually. Uh, there's a reason why ideas explode. You know, there's a reason why inflammation does disappear and the stress retreats and the procrastination and the resistance gremlins go running. It's the same principle. Like when you're in a shower and you turn it on and all of a sudden you get these great ideas. Like I put bathtub crayons in my shower so that I can write down ideas because I have so many of them. The reason that is, is because you touch the water and the water is grounded. So like if you want a great form of digital detox and you can't go outside that often, or you live really deep in a city and it's a lot of concrete, there are amazing companies. If you go to earthing.com, they make earthing mats. You can put them under your computer. You can put them on your mattress of your bed and it'll run through the grounding outlet on your plugs and it'll keep you connected to earth's energy while you're sleeping. So when you're sleeping, you are going into the process of the body that is trying to heal itself. You know, that's what sleep is for. It's like the body turns on. It's like, okay, what are all these things we need to repair while you're asleep? If you're not getting good sleep because you're eating too much caffeine or you're drinking alcohol late at night, or you're looking at your televisions late night, all these digital things that can sort of disrupt yourself, these mats will help that. But if you're, you know, you're cutting yourself off from those things and also using these mats and also going outside and playing during the day, whenever you can, you're going to see a massive, a massive rise in creativity and, and a reduction of stress. And it's, it's quite remarkable. There's anyone that wants to learn more on that, that subject from like legit scientists and doctors, which I'm not, I'm just speaking from my experience. Um, if you go to earthing.com, they actually made a documentary at one point. That's really good. And it talks about the science behind this. There was like a cable guy who was running, you know, with cable companies, you have to run ground lines to keep things from exploding. And he, he like thought about it one day and was like, wait, what, wait, what? we should be grounded. Like we're not grounded anymore. And these disease rates have been rising for, you know, the last 50 years drastically, you know, there's a lot of things involved with that, but 
he was able to get some, I think it was Stanford, one of these universities to do some tests with him. And they hooked up some earthing mats to all these like premature born babies that had been in the hospital and sick. And like the healing that started to immediately happen was way crazy. It was like, whoa, you know, you just need a little bit of earth. They don't need to be sitting on these beds disconnected from this, but they actually need uh, the nutrition and the healing powers of the earth. So it's a massive form of digital detox, probably the biggest, right? Totally. Totally. Yeah. Well, one other question I wanted to touch on before we're out of time is just, I love on your website, how you talk about destroying your bad mood and moods can make it or break it. And they're also, you know, good moods and bad moods can be contagious. You start your day in a bad mood. It kind of like, is this, you know, kind of like the start of your day in a bad mood is going to like I had that domino this morning. effect into, <laughs> yeah. So how do you reverse it? How do you reverse it? For me, it, it comes with sort of a sanctuary of creating a sacred space and being absolutely serious about showing up to that space early in the morning and doing a few things that will help ground and center yourself. I don't have, you know, my life's not perfect and I have a lot of emotional roller coasters. You should just ask my girlfriend what she has to deal with sometimes as a creative or whatever. But, um, I have this, I can share what I do particularly nowadays. Anyone wants to create their own. I suggest getting the the miracle morning by Hal Elrod, or there's this really amazing book called the five Tibetans. It's this like five minute process with the body that it's a really short read that you can do every single day, multiple times a day. It's incredible, but I, so I'll do Wim Hof breath work first. So I have like an altar that I've got set up with like inspirational quotes and like things from nature and things that have been gifted for me from whether I work it within medicine ceremonies, sometimes with combo frog medicine and, and like Mayan fire ceremonies. And I've studied a lot with, it's just like so fascinating to, to be able to like meet and, and learn from Mayan lineage holders really. And, and learn how to actually live with, with the earth cycles. But I I put a lot of those things and reminders, people I love ancestors on my altar candles. It's really good to put all the earth elements. So like get a couple plants, get a candle for the fire, get a glass of water and every day put fresh water in there. It's just, it's the work. It's the practice of like being present for this type of thing and not forgetting. And then I will do breath work. Wim Hof has a, a free app I do about four rounds of just deep breathing. It's really simple. Anybody can do it. It's just 30 seconds of deep breathing and then you hold it. And then 30 seconds of deep breathing and you hold it. That calms me down and gets my heart slowing down. It helps me sort of focus. And then I go over my affirmations and I have about 20 affirmations. Mine are very, I separate my personal and business specific ones, but I do try to put all of them are in the present moment. And all of them sort of have metrics involved. Usually like if I'm working towards something in business, I'll have numbers that I want to hit by a certain date usually. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get there by that date, but the more that you are reading these out loud to yourself in the morning, after you calm yourself down, the more you're aware that this is what you want to be working within and becoming. And therefore you're going to subconsciously take actions throughout your day to make these things come to life. That's the biggest difference between affirmations working and not. It's that you are putting action behind them to bring them to life. And so the action side of that is like, I'll read my affirmations and then I get a note card out and I put a couple of the affirmations. I'll write a couple of them that I'm focusing specifically on for the day on one side. And then I'll write a date. Cause I always have this sort of hundred day date that I'm working towards. Um, you could, For instance, when I didn't have a job and I was using that, I am location independent and I work for myself affirmation. I always wrote down June 22nd, one six, because that was the day that I wanted to be free from my job. I did that for three years straight. I wrote that affirmation down on the other side of the card. You write two action items that you're going to take in the day to move towards that vision. And three years later, I was sitting, you know, I'd sold my house and everything I owned and I was sitting across the country and like had a business, wasn't working for someone else. And it was like this surreal whoa, like visions really do come to reality and you can't ever see it in the moment because it feels like this moment's so big, but like when you're feeling pain or you're suffering, but little tiny things every single day or every other day, or at least a couple of times a week, they're going to add up to be remarkable over time. So I do that, the note card, two action items, and then some affirmations. And then I do, 
I read, I try to read something about 10 minutes of something inspiring at least to just kind of get my head flowing. And because I'm a writer, not everyone needs to do this, but I, I do encourage journaling in every capacity of just getting your thoughts out and, or drawing or doing something creative. I will write for an hour. I'll put binarial beats on my headphones and I'll get on my computer. I use Scrivener and I just write, whether it's working on a book or I'm writing affirmations or I'm doing blogs or podcast scripts or whatever, you know, poetry, I do a lot of poetry. And then I do the body movement stuff. So that's five Tibetans or Zach Bush. I don't know if anyone is familiar with him. He's a brilliant doctor. He, he's been interviewed a lot recently because he's like a, a genius when it, he's, he's basically spearheading the problem with glyphosate and gut health and turn, helping farmers turn their farms back into organic farming. But Zach, he's got this like five minute YouTube video of this quick little thing you can do with your body movements a couple of times a day to get your blood flowing and to keep you healthy. So that's another option over the five Tibetans that I think has really helped. And then I just like to do trail runs. I like to walk. I like to do things outside, but I try to make sure I'm moving my body and getting outside. And there's so many, there's so many things that I've put into this routine throughout the past that, you know, we could share like cold showers and going outside first thing and standing in the grass and, you know, drinking 16 ounces of water is something I do before everything, which I didn't mention with lemon and mineral salt, but like, it's easy to find how many things you can pack into this moment. But what's important is that you do what helps center you. And these are just examples that might help, that might work for you. And I suggest trying anything that you can, that you think could help. And, and if you feel resistance or you feel fear, that means that it's most likely something that you need to work into and do. Don't turn away from it. Don't quit because it feels hard, but actually lean into it and try to work on breaking your habit of hesitating. Because if you can break your habit of hesitation, then you can really overcome anything. I think for our listeners who are either entrepreneurs or digital marketers or mompreneurs or solopreneurs, I think the routine that you just described, even part of it would help reduce procrastination and promote creativity and reaching your goals. And I think whether it's, you know, personal or business, that that's pretty huge. Yeah. Well, it's massive. I have, I mean, I have a big system for it. Like that goes all the way from the habits I use in every day, all the way to my core visions of who I want to be as a person at the end of my life. And it, they're all in alignment with each other, like a chakra. There's like seven phases to it. And it's, it's powerful. You touched a little bit on like diet and the importance of drinking water in the morning with the lemon and the, the, the sea salt. Is that what you use? Sea salt, what you recommend? Yeah. I mean, when you wake up, you should try to drink 16 to 40 ounces before doing anything else. Uh, it, the number depend, you know, it, it, you have to kind of fill it out. Not everybody's body is the same. You can damage yourself by drinking too much water at once. And make sure it's spring water because spring water has a specific molecule size that actually fits the 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 size of your cells to hydrate you. Other types of water like tap water, they have other things in them that change the molecule size and therefore cannot hydrate you to the extent that spring water can. So you're drinking water and this sort of acts like a, a morning internal bath or a cleanse that gets, you, that gets your juices flowing for the day. You really need this because you lose a lot of water when you sleep by sweating. And so there's a website called findaspring.com also that will help you locate natural springs that are awesome all around the country. So check that out and then make sure you're drinking that water at sort of a room temperature, because if you drink at cold temperatures, it doesn't help digest as fast and it doesn't really help boost your metabolism like room temperature water does. And I do drink it with, with, I, I call it a mineral cocktail and there's a reason for it. And I can sort of break that down if you want, but there's, yeah. Yeah. So there's, I get something called pure Celtic sea salt. It's a blue bag. You can, it's kind of becoming more common. It's Selena naturally, I think makes it. I mix lemon and pure Celtic sea salt with the morning water. And it's because lemons are rich in vitamin C and they are also a strong antioxidant, which helps combat free radicals. Like we talked about earlier. And they include quercetin, which was a big thing that was, you know, used to, to help alleviate symptoms of like you know, flu or COVID, but, but quercetin and it, it sort of acts like an antiviral or an antihistamine and it prevents allergies and it prevents inflammation and things like that. So if you have those types of problems, it'll really help just by putting sea salt and lemon in your water. Sea salt contains over 60 beneficial trace minerals, and that's beyond the traditional sodium and iodine and, and chloride found in normal table salt. So 
these really help me with optimizing like performance of the body and muscle contraction and nerve function and, and all of the sort of cell level hydration retention that we need. And you also get a lot more benefits from that, including magnesium and potassium and, and zinc and boron and all these things that help build muscles and help you sleep. Like th there's just no reason not to be, I was with a doctor in Mexico at this medicine farm one time, and he would literally this guy was brilliant. He went to Harvard, but he practices in Mexico. He can't do some of his certain types of work in the United States. He's just eating handfuls of, of like sea salt, like all the time. And I was like, man, I was asking about it. He's like, if there's anything you can do to help yourself, I'm not talking about like refined table salt. That's bad, mm -hmm. but like yeah. make sure you're getting enough electrolytes. And it, that doesn't mean buying like over the counter sell, you know, marketed electrolytes that, that are like all sugar and a bunch of BS. It's literally just get Celtic sea salt. And then it's good if you're getting, if you're getting Himalayan sea salt that doesn't have iodine in it, it's also good to take iodine separately because iodine is really, really important. And then I'll also add yeah, a tablespoon. Was, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say like right before the pandemic, I started taking, putting drops of like the certain type of iodine into my water. Yeah. to boost my immune system is what, you know, that's why I bought it, what I bought it for. So, I mean, I haven't been sick actually in a year and a half. Yeah, no, I, I <laughs> never, all. I never get sick and iodine is a huge factor of that. So is ion biome, which is basically all the essential aminos and, and nutrients from real healthy soil. Zach Bush makes this also, if you take ion biome, cause like in our food supply, there's everything has we're, we're making stuff out of dead soil. So like, even if a tomato looks perfect and it comes from a non GMO or it, it, you know, a lot of stuff that comes from GMO or like glyphosate has destroyed all of our soils. There's no nutrients left in that tomato, no matter how perfect it looks when you eat it, unless you're getting like, you know, real food from a real local farmer who's like doing organic practices and stuff like that. He actually creates a product that takes all of those beneficial nutrients from all of these different healthy plants and soils and puts them into where you can just take it as a liquid a couple of times a day. So that with iodine, and then I take silver as well, but, but yeah, th there's, those are like three huge things for me. And then th this mineral cocktail, I add apple cider vinegar into, mm -hmm. and there's a, that's kind of an obvious one. People kind of veer away from it. Cause they're like, Ooh, the taste of vinegar. But like, if you put a teaspoon in 20 ounces of water, you're not even going to taste the vinegar. What and about the tablets? The apple cider vinegar. Tablets. I, I imagine they work. I don't, I've never, yeah. you know, I, I, I would get, I always just say, get apple cider vinegar, which is organic with the mother in it. I also make mm -hmm. my own kombuchas and stuff and that works really well, but I don't know. Use your intuition. Does it seem like a manufactured product or is it something that actually seems natural? <laughs> Cause uh, mm -hmm. the tablets probably work. I just don't know that much about them because I never used them, but the vinegar will help neutralize your stomach acid levels and promote digestive health. And I was somebody who had really chronic stomach acid problems my entire life to where the bottom of my esophagus actually eroded away. And, you know, Western medicine had me as a, as a, a young child feeding me these acid blocking pills, treating me as if, as if I had excess acid reflux and the whole time. And in most cases, if you have a lot of acid reflux and bloating, it's because you have too little stomach acid. It's not because you have too much. And that is crazy to think about because the way that everyone is treated is, is, is if you have too much stomach acid. Apple cider vinegar was one of the main components that and breath work that helped me break, you know, my dependency on these blockers, which were really just harming my body long-term in unbelievable bad ways. They block protein intake. They, there's just like, so much data that shows how destructive these things can be, but you know, it's all natural stuff, vinegar, salt, water, lemon, like those four things every morning can, can be drastic in your health in all sorts of different areas. You also touched on sleep. So maybe we can just touch on that. Yeah. I mean, I think sleep is, I used to drink a lot of coffee. I used to watch television until I went to sleep, drinking red wine at night or alcohol or being an alcoholic in general. Like you have alcohol in your body, alcohol prevents you from sleeping. Sean, if anyone wants to really dive in, dive deep into sleep cycle, Sean Stevenson has a really good book called, um, I think it's just called sleep. He runs the model health show, which is an incredible podcast for learning about health stuff. I learned a lot from him. One being like to take magnesium and I use organic Olivia's calm the body magnesium. I'm not sure 
if it's still branded that way or not, but a topical magnesium that actually absorbs through your skin really helps with sleep. Also the natural vitality, like traditional calm, natural calm uh, powder that you can take every night really helps as well. But magnesium is like one of the most things, one of the things that we are most deficient in. Every human is almost most deficient in magnesium. And it's one of the, the, the things that actually helps sleep cycles the most. When I think of sleep holistically, I think of circadian rhythm, right? And it's like, how can we get back to syncing our bodies with the rise and fall of the sun? And if you're naturally waking up at 5 a.m. in the summer because the sun's coming up and then you're naturally getting really tired and drowsy around 8 or 9 p.m. in the summer because the sun's going down, that's amazing. In the winter, you're going to sleep a little bit earlier because believe it or not, we do need more sleep in the winter and it is a time for our bodies to reset, but we've created the environment for us, all these you know indoor artificial environments that make it not that necessary. But when you're not in sync with these giant balls of gravity that are you know, really in charge and, and very much in connection with us, it can really screw yourself up from a point of view of, of, you know, all sorts of autoimmune diseases and pain and just inflammation in general and a lack of creativity and resistance. So I think there's so many approaches to go with sleeping. Digital detox could be number one, right? Like cut yourself off hard from your cell phone and your computer at least a couple hours before you go to sleep. There is a incredible Mac app. I don't know if they make them for windows or not, but it's called Iris and it's, it's amazing. It'll not, you can set different settings, but it'll naturally blue light block your screen throughout the day. And once you start using it and then you see a normal screen brightness later, you'll be like, oh, you can't even look at it because it's so bright. Cause you, your body has adapted back to the natural way that it should be perceiving light through the eyes. That's an awesome thing. Like use blue blockers. The, the iPhone does sort of tint its screen now automatically, but it's not fully uh, that effective. So like, it's best just to cut yourself off hard from screens. Don't watch television. Don't, especially don't watch media television, <laughs> read a book, you know, go outside, go on a walk. Don't drink any alcohol. Don't drink coffee past 1 PM. Do exercise every single day. And those things in themselves you know, it makes you, you're hydrating yourself are going to help you get a lot better sleep. And it might feel weird at first, but you will, and you will. And, and like the, the sleeping max, I'm sorry, the sleeping mats, the, the earthing mats will really help with that too. When I started sleeping on one of those, I, I was sleeping two or three hours longer than I wanted to be. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this isn't going to work, you know? And then I, my body corrected itself back out again and now it's normal, but like, it's amazing what, about, what those um, little things can do. Yeah. What about sleep temperature? Like what, do you have any insights on temperature like that your room should be at when you're sleeping? I've well, heard, I think, you know, like 70 or below is, <laughs> is healthier than warmer. Yeah. I, you know, I don't, I really don't know much about that. I know for myself that I sleep way better when it's cold. You know, I mean, I'm talking like I can sleep great if it's, if, if I'm outdoors and it's in the forties, I sleep amazing, but like naturally in the mid sixties is where I find optimal sleep. There's probably some fascinating books out there on that topic though, that it's kind of jogging me to want to go look into now, because if you have like a partner or, you know, a husband or children or something that you sleep next to it is, I've always noticed like people have different temperatures. And I know when I was an alcoholic, I would heat up and get really hot when I slept because my body's trying to detox everything. Like when your body's heating itself up, it's the same thing that happens. Like when you get a flu, your body's heating itself up, you get a temperature and try to detox all this stuff out of your body. So I think like, you know, high, high body temperatures is probably your body trying to detox itself and being in a cold, a cooler environment helps you sort of stay cooler. So you know, I think if you, if you really take a good approach to, to overall health, then maybe you won't even have to worry so much about the temperature, but it's a fascinating subject that I'm going to, I'm going to explore now that you mention it. Well, he, you have been just amazing insights and in all these different topics and verticals when it comes to digital detox. And I'm very inspired to go try some of these and use some of your affirmations and use some of these rituals that you went over for the morning time to help me be more productive and open up creativity and stop procrastination and super inspiring. I really want to thank you. And we'll make sure to put all of these resources that you mentioned, which you mentioned so many actionable resources in the show notes. So if you're listening, don't worry about taking notes, go to the show notes 
and we will provide them all to you as well as links to Heath's affirmation cards and podcast and all the good stuff. Thank you so much, Heath. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. And I really appreciate it. Thank you for listening to this episode of Social PR Secrets. If you like what you heard, check out the book on Amazon or follow our blog at socialprsecrets.com. This episode was sponsored by The Buyer Group, a social PR agency striving to keep our balance in the digital world, practicing public relations, social media, and search marketing, while occasionally drinking a glass of wine or two for the best creativity and results. Thank you all for tuning in. If you would like to get a free chapter of Social PR Secrets, go to socialprsecrets.com slash free.